Salam, how are you? So you have no clue about our interviews, right? How are you really doing? Good and bad at the same time. I had my vision since I was 12 years old. So I started as a, one of the first Persian rappers. Fame, do you like it? Police trying to arrest me because I was a hip hop artist only. So it was very, very hard for my decision to leave the country at that early age. This is important. Like, I'm also getting to know you. I think we, did, we should do a Tohi Tag and I'm interviewing you. <laughs> <laughs> what does love mean to you? Now or yesterday? <laughs> there is a rumor that you're married in secret. Who? You. Me? Yeah. When was the last time Hussein cried? Probably a few days ago. Why? Do we need to know why? Hey guys, before you watch this episode, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell. Thank you. Okay. Hi, Hassan. Hi, Anas. <laughs> Salam, how are you? Alaykum yes. Salam. Um, so you have no clue about our interviews, right? Perfect. That's the best Nothing. way to start. I heard it's too personal. It's very personal. It's very human. Oh, yeah, nice. You know, um, it's a show that we try to... Because, you know, our chat before, it, yeah. You were saying, you know, you've done interviews, but it's very work yeah, it was centric. Yeah, music related. Yeah, we're the so. opposite. So it's about who's the artist behind the artist. I like that. You know, who's the engineer That's behind being an engineer. You want to know the, the human being and human beings have similar important parts of their life. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to know today about you. Yes, so. sir. I'm down. First question is, uh, Hussein, how are you really doing? I mean... Good and bad at the same time. Hmm. Because it's life, right? That's the balance of it. So if you can manage the good and bad at the same time, that's the best way. So I'm trying to do that. What is good uh, currently and what is bad? Bad. Which one shall I start first? <laughs> Maybe with good, huh? Sure. Good is when I think you know your purpose and you basically, you wake up, obviously we say Alhamdulillah first, I'm Muslim like you as well. <laughs> so we have another chance for another day. Mm. And that's already a good thing to start your day, I think. And you know your purpose, that's why you're here still. So that's a good part. Mm. And you have that clear picture in your head, like wh where you want to go and you're creating more. and. That's also is part of the good things for me that is happening right now. Because that's a blessing, I think, Great. at least for an artist. Yes. And uh, the bad is when we hear bad news every day from especially my country, Iran. Hmm. So does that affect you? A lot. Although, personally, you're, although yeah. you live very far, does it still like hurt you? Because I have my families there. My parents, they go between London and Tehran and Obviously, like, you know, and my people as well, like, when you see, like, your people's feeling not happy totally. I don't want to make your interview sad, though. I'm just telling the bad part, so <laughs> you feel it up and down. But when you feel that your people doesn't, they're not happy with their situation and lifestyle and freedom, how they want to dress. So, yeah, that's, that's my bad moments at the moment. And... I and feel hopefully we're going to have a good day again soon in our country. Inshallah. Inshallah. And uh, you said it's, you're lucky mm -hmm. if you know your purpose. What is uh, Hussein's purpose? To be honest, uh, I think everybody's purpose is to be best of themselves first and they love themselves so they can love others and 
uh, that's that's the purpose of our humanity and purpose of what we're doing. I don't want to get into work so much because you tell me be more straight. Whatever, away. if work yeah. is your life, we talk also. Yeah, I feel like everybody have have has a purpose already. So I had my vision since I was 12 years old. So I started very like earliest stage in my life that I knew it like I'm belonging to. I was trying football and soccer, they call it in USA. <laughs> uh, but some, somehow what happened, like I broke my hand actually in soccer and then I just go to music. Mm. I started as a, one of the first Persian rappers from Tehran and from day one, I feel like I had a purpose to make my music international and hmm. do the crossover soon. <laughs> um, you reminded me of The Rock, uh, Dwayne Johnson. Yeah. There was a video that was online. I'm getting there though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> too, just far. Need more <laughs> too far. More protein shakes. Um, and he was talking about how he wanted to, he, well, he started as an American football player, but not NFL level, I would assume. Yeah, yeah. And then he got a bad injury or something, but that injury. Same movie. Yeah, same for me. And you had an injury and you wanted something Same else. for me. Imagine, a huh? Smaller size. <laughs> uh, there is a nice story. Um, I was watching a documentary uh, and Tom Brady brought this up. It's nice. a, a story I've heard it a few times, but it's a cool story. Mm -hmm. And he said there is this, uh, the story is about a Chinese farmer. And this farmer has a horse that runs away. So the people of the village tell him, oh, I'm really sorry, you know, that your ha horse ran away. You didn't have other than one horse and now he's gone. So he looks at them and says, maybe. A few days go, then the horse comes back with more horses with him. So everybody goes, wow, look at how maybe. lucky you are. <laughs> Yeah. And you now you have not one, you have six, right? And he goes, maybe. And sure. then uh, his son gets on one of those wild horses and falls and breaks his leg. So everybody's like, ah, oh, you see the horses that you got, they injured your son, how bad? You should have not accepted these horses, etc. And he goes, mm -hmm. maybe. And then oh, yeah. the military, life, life is amazing the military sure. starts to recruit the young men and they don't recruit his son because he has a broken leg. So everybody's like, your son is lucky that he has a broken leg. He's not going to, to war. And he goes, maybe. So it's really interesting. You got injured. Yeah. And a lot of, maybe you felt like, oh, I'm so unlucky. I, I would have been a bit good footballer or I was on my way. And suddenly the maybe becomes music. Maybe. <laughs> Absolutely. For real, for real, no. Hmm. I felt the same way, definitely. Like it was a... It was my destiny to that happen and I was like more listening to to Pikes and B.I.G. and Eminem and that time I was like why we don't have it in Persian <laughs> so I was like mm -hmm. I started rapping and now like I made so many like English songs as well with so many good rappers from USA from Europe from you know Sheikh Khaled as well we have yes. that song Balatar uh, in Dubai actually we're gonna release it and it's blessing it's it's blessing because I know some of the legends since I was like child, you know, like, and now I have the chance to work with them. And I made a song with Gypsy Kings. Wow, uh, that's yeah. cool. Scott Storch made the beat. He was, he's one of the greatest uh -huh. producers. He made Candy Shop or a Steel DRE with, you know, Dr. Dre. And yes. So he's a legend. I had the chance to work with him. Imagine, um, huh? Yeah. From a 12 year old boy in Iran. Yeah, that and now you're connecting with people that. It's yes, a funny it's, world. It's, it's blessing, yeah. Mm. It I is. was a big fan of Tupac when I was younger. Are you? Big fan. All his Are albums, everything. <laughs> of course. Yeah. He was uh, one of a kind, I would yeah, say. Yeah, of course. Yeah, even the way he rapped was very unique. You know? Tupac Amura Shakur, man. Yes. Rest um, in peace. If I had uh, the, the name Tohi, how did it come about? Let me explain you without glasses. Yeah. <laughs> the glasses should go because you have beautiful eyes, so we keep oh, your thank eyes. thank you. No, I was, I'm so jet lagged, man. I'm so tired. I'm sure. You know, I'm so tired. I, I came from LA. I go to Istanbul. I had, I had some music rehearsal because... You know what's the worst jet lag? Yeah. LA here is the worst I've ever experienced. And I can't sleep. I don't know why. Like, It's your body. It's not used to it. Yeah. And they apparently they say for every time difference of one hour you need one day 
So yeah. I think between here and LA is probably like 12 hours at least, maybe. That's 12 days. That's Imagine awesome. for your body to adapt. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah, the name Tohi. So Tohi means empty, actually. Empty. Empty, mm. but empty from negativity, empty from the bad stuff. You know? <laughs> it's mm. more like that humble vibe. So in Persian, Tohi means empty. So that's why I put it as a nickname, but my real name is Hussein. Mm. So yeah, I, I had it like since I was 13, 12. Wow. My first music. So. But how, why would you, th that's a very unique name, mm -hmm. even for a 12 year old. Why would a 12 year old think I want the word empty? Because I was in a class, in the math class, and then we have Tohi in the math class as well. Hmm. Tohi means empty, but that two, I don't know the name of it. <laughs> it's two somethings empty that, that is comfortable with all the digits, other digits. It's very complicated to explain it, but we have something in the math actually called mm. Tohi. Mm. So the teacher was keep saying Tohi, Tohi. And I was like, damn, I'm looking for a nickname. And I heard that Tohi was comfortable with, compatible with all the other digits. And I was like, wow, that's interesting facts already from it. So I just choose Tohi. And also I had that humbleness of it. Like everybody saying I'm full of information. I'm full of experience. I'm full of ego, <laughs> mm. right? That empty is kind of, I think a humble point. I love it. Keep you grinded. <laughs> yeah. I love it, man. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's interesting, Hussein, because for somebody in your field, um, going from a very maybe restricted kind of limited yeah. uh, life in, in music, mm -hmm. and then suddenly you're working with people that, you know, other people just see on TV or on posters. It's so easy to get full of yourself. It's so easy to develop a huge ego. It's so easy to be arrogant or to forget your roots. Yeah. So I like how this 12 year old <laughs> kid wanted something that is adaptable and compatible with people and keeps you, like you said, grounded. Yeah. It's very interesting. Everything is started from that guy, 12 years old, had a dream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I actually came out from my country, like in the earliest stage of my age, because the police trying to arrest me because I was a hip hop artist only. So they're scared <laughs> We bring people together in the streets. So they're trying to arrest me a few times in my school, in my homes. And finally I came out. I was for a few weeks in Istanbul and then I came to Dubai actually for a few years. Mm. I was like 16, 17. And then after a few years, so I was just keep doing what I were doing leaving to what I had in my heart and as a mission, just going forward. So I just moved to London after a few years and I stay almost 10 years there. Wow. Eight to 10 years. Yeah. And then from four years ago, I just moved to LA, hmm. the music land. <laughs> I have a random question. Yeah. If I gave you a white canvas like this mm. and I asked you to draw your mental state at the moment, what would you draw? Interesting. Draw it. Mm. I'll, I'll do the same thing that I said, <laughs> mm. you know, and then at the end it's going high. Nice. So it's the ups and, and it, downs yeah, of... It's like that and then it's going high. Mm. So you're going for that. That's yeah. the goal. Yeah. Okay. Now we are on the yes. process that's normal it's the trust journey the, you, you should trust the process always i mean that could take long mm. to what i have in my mind because it's not just music i'm making it in music and that's it like i did it i'm ready to die <laughs> it's not just that for me like i have another like so many goals behind it yeah tell me hussein about your childhood how was it Childhood, what, what age you mean? Anything. <laughs> By childhood. What, how do you remember it? <laughs> to be honest, <clears throat> very beginning, it was just like learning the world. So it wasn't like, I had always that music love in me and I had a very chill family. They're not into music a lot. So it was harder for me <laughs> to come with them to come to music because we never had rap in our country, so it was mm. something new for them and for the older age, unacceptable sometimes, you know. 
so you, when you're 15 years old, you can't just say, hey, I have a dream. It's, it's rap. They're like, what? <laughs> you don't even know where is it, you know? So you can't just leave a country. And I was not sing uh, the only boy they had in the family. I have one sister, but uh, in that moment, I was only the boy in the family. So it was very, very hard for my decision to leave the country at that early age. So it was hard because when you're 14 and you know, like that you have a talent and you have that excitement and love and passion for something. You want to go and get your dream and 24 seven thinking about it and working on it and building it. Because my childhood was all of that. Like uh, that was the only thing I was thinking in my head. And then at the other side of your brain, they're trying to arrest you for that. So you should run in as well. So it's Again, <laughs> you know, it was always like that, up and down. And I'm blessed because that ups and down made like who I am and as a character, as a strongness, as a mental uh, goals and set and, you know, visions that I like always made, made it stronger, like after all the problems. So the childhood was pretty up and down, mm -hmm. but blessing because I didn't want to boring childhood either. Hmm. Just grew up in a rich family, amazing, with orange juice, wake up, no, I'm good. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. And um, you were ill when you were young, you, you got sick. Yeah, I was seven or something. Oh, how'd you know that? Hmm. <laughs> uh, Google, right? <laughs> Research. <laughs> Research. Hmm. Yeah, no advertisement on Google. <laughs> how, was, how did that, uh, what um, happened then? I think I get a very high, high temperature. It was like crazy, like 42 or something is <laughs> about to die. And um, God sent it me back, I guess. Like next day I was perfectly, I mean, the doctor said like, he's gone. Really? Yeah, yeah, to all my family, like everything. Thank God I'm here today. And, hmm. and how was the Hussein, your relationship with your mom and dad? Uh, I think they are the most blessing persons we have in our life at the moment and while they're alive. Like I'm always loving them. I'm always calling them. I'm, I'm actually going next week to see my mom and my sister, my nephew. I'm going to see my dad later in, in the year. It's good. I'm talking on the f try to talk every day, mm. at least for a few minutes or at least a voice message. Mm. Thank God of, uh, modern <laughs> family now that everybody using WhatsApp and everything, so. But when Hussein was 12 or 13, it, it seems like you're a very stubborn uh, son. And, but I say it in a good way because yeah. you want something that is very uncommon yeah. and not very accepted or hardly accepted. Yeah. Because it's like an alien, it's something foreign. It's you're yeah. not used to, it's not like six artists were there before you and they're like, ah, oh, they can compare. So. Was it difficult for you as a relationship with mom and dad really wanting to do something that they didn't understand probably? So it was very new and also uh, the idea was it, it wasn't like before in our country. So it was hard for them to believe it. But one day I said to them, if I'm not doing this, I'm going to kill myself, <laughs> simple. <laughs> and they're scared when I said that. Obviously, I was trying to scare them as well mm. because I really wanted to follow my dream. And after that, they were like, okay, go, <laughs> you're good to go. So is that, but after like one year, I made them already like, she was calling like, oh, I'm with my friends. They really love you. So she already felt that mm. proud. <laughs> it's for me, it's quite um, amazing and interesting that a 12 year old knows what he wants. It's very rare to meet people anywhere in the world that know what they want and they actually sustain it till they're like much yeah. older. It's usually you want to be an astronaut or a policeman, but it doesn't happen because it's not realistic, right? Yeah. Very rare that somebody knows what they want that early. How, like, how did you know you want to be a rapper when you don't have examples and you're really young? To be honest, like when I was six, seven, I was feeling music and I was I was dancing actually, like, you know, a little bit, <laughs> trying every, every other dance, like moves and everything. I tried to, 
I was something in music that was making me crazy. Like even in a mirror, like I was, I remember I was playing music. I was trying to be that singer or artist or dance with it. Or it was something in my blood, I think. Hmm. And uh, by internet, when I get the computer, it was the big ones, you know, with the case and everything. So I sold my PlayStation actually. <laughs> it was Sega, I think. Uh, so to get that computer. So yeah, I was from computer getting to know more about mm. hip hop and I was thinking one day and I, we had like few other rappers as well doing in Persian already, but maybe the audience was maybe 100 people <laughs> in total. Uh, so yeah, I think computer internet helps a lot as well to spread. Mm. But it was in my blood because 12 years old still is just especially back in the days if the computer was hard to even work with it, you know, like. Mm. And is it true that you got kicked out of university because you're a rapper? Yeah, of the school, university, and then I was like, you know what, I can't live anymore. Wow. Yeah. So they would... But God always saved me somehow, because like I was going to a studio, the police came and I came out from the back door. <laughs> One time, like they came to a school that the manager of a school called me and he said, don't come here. They come to arrest you. So this guy kind of always saved me somehow. Wow. And so a lot of close, close calls. God's plan, right? <laughs> Interesting, huh? So people liked you, I would say. That's why maybe he would call you and say, don't I guess come. I was blessed. Yes, because mm. I was always with my people, always trying to do it for the culture, for my people, for... Because if you say like to, a, to if you go to USA or UK, which is like most, mostly international music coming from, obviously Canada and other countries like, are, or Europe as well. Or, but we don't have so much in Middle East. Like if you go to, to an American person or say like, do you know any Middle East artists or mm. Asia? Like they don't know anyone. So I want to be, work hard for, to be that first title. Hmm. for all the Middle East, you know. And that's hard and that means dedication, that means hard works, that means you have a pure energy and pure, like full-time love for it, you know. Yeah. I think that's the only way. Um, what do you think, Hussein, if you could teach a child a lesson, one lesson, what would you teach a child? I think to just pursue their dreams because everybody has a unique story in their brain when... And to be honest, I have to say something else, like do less video games because... <laughs> so for some people, if it's the video ga gaming is the job and they're making money of it and they have the lifestyle, that's different. That's one percent maybe. Yeah, but I used to do a lot. That's why I'm saying I stopped doing it because I feel it as an escape plan now because when you don't want to do nothing with no result and anything. It's good sometimes you do like after the studio, like we, we always do that, like one FIFA or one Call of Duty or something like that, you know. Mm. But that's just like 15 minutes to half an hour. But some people they just sit there and in the early age, your brain is just developing and you're just dealing with a bunch of shootings and games and, you know, mm. virtual stuff. <laughs> I think to just pursue their dreams, like whoever they want to be and picture what, how, where is the maximum uh, capacity of like where they want to go, you know? Because mm. I was pictured like, it was in my brain, the whole stage in front of people, in front of my fans. It was always had it in my brain. Mm. And thank God I did it. Like the most I had, it was 20,000 people. The next one is the biggest. It's going to be in 55,000 people show. So it's mm. blessing. It's a, a very good point that you, you brought up because I, I spoke about this a, a few times. And I said how I agree with you that you can go to the coffee shop. You can go play football with your friends you can play video games with your friends but how much of it are you doing so let's talk about video games since you brought it up yeah you're absolutely right like i understand when my brother comes from his day job and he wants to play games and network with his friends yeah i'm like one hour is de-stress absolutely yeah sometimes. five hours 
You no. don't have that much time in your day. No. If five hours goes to video games, you lose on relationships, you lose on self-development, Definitely. on sleep, Definitely. on so many things. And every day, I think you should add something to yourself, right? Like learning something, or do something for your life or business, you know? Some people, they always stay at the same stage and they, they don't want to grow. That's the thing, like you should be that hungry hustler all the time to, till you reach your whole goals, you know? If you have any. Do you think, Hassan, you, you really worked hard to be where you are at the moment? I, I think I, I put my life on 24-7 time for it. Sometimes when I was younger, if I was dealing with problems, so it was taking me down slow. And I had more and more problems because my mother language is, is not English. So it's harder to, you know, to make international stuff. And it was hard as well at the beginning because I just came out from the country to learn more English and try to sing in English. And that's another scenario, <laughs> you know. So it's a lot of more work for me. So that's why I dedicate more time mm. instead of partying a lot. Or I'm not saying party is a bad thing, but if you manage everything and do that party as a reward mm. for yourself and mm. friends and the people you love, that's the real party for me now. To celebrate our success, you know. <laughs> there is um, uh, an interview with Muhammad Ali, God rest his soul. Yeah, rest in peace. And, Legend. And somebody, the interviewer asked him, he said, uh, what makes you so great as a boxer? Is it the training? Is it the way you train? Is it how you sleep or whatever? And he's like, uh, he said something along the lines by uh, not uh, running after girls too much. And he's like, you want me to be honest? Yeah. It's learning not to drink and learning not to party and exactly. learning not to run after women all the time. He's like, you need discipline. And, he, and exactly. he said something cool. He's like, you should be okay to be sleeping on a bed at 9 p.m. alone. True. Interesting. Sometimes, huh? especially for a sport, but for music, you can be more crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of the culture. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> that's why I didn't go but to I, football. I, I, okay, that's actually a good point. Yeah. Do you think the best artists were more disciplined in music? Yeah, but sometimes for creation, you need some different experiences in your life as an artist, especially mm. when you write your own lyrics. So... It's just not like if, if you have like the best relationship with your friend, with your girlfriend, with your wife, with whatever you have in your life, whoever you have in your life. Uh, if it's not up and down in your personal life, you can't write mm. up and down in your music. So everything's going to be in the same frequency. Good, good, positive, chill. I'm comfortable, you know. Mm. So for an artist, you don't need to have a Muhammad Ali lifestyle or Ronaldo's lifestyle. You need to have a disciplined rock star, you know, like you have the craziness and you have that discipline that you know you shouldn't cross the limit, you know. Hmm. Everybody had different limit, but you need to you need to know your limit before because we've seen so many people unfortunately that they, they lost their life for that. Hmm. They lost career, like they lost everything like they built for a few years. They reached number one for drugs, they die. Like, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And that's sad. Abuse, like, drugs, alcohol, suicide. Yeah. Depression. So bankruptcy. Exactly. So many different scenarios, you know? And I think what you said is so interesting and very deep. You need to know your limit. You need to be self-aware. And you need to set boundaries for yourself, you know? Hmm. If it's a fire, you one time touching it, two times. The third time, you're not going to touch it, you know. Mm. Try to do one, two times and don't do it again. It, no, you, Where's my camera? <laughs> 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 to the kids. <laughs> that was a message for the 12 years old. <laughs> your, your argument is a very good argument. The fact that for a creative, you need experiences. Yeah. And With limits, up and down. but experience. Negative, positive. To write. Drama. Um, Mm. happiness blessings yeah i have never thought of that yeah it's a good point that's why artists that broke up they make the best songs right <laughs> uh fame do you like it it's cool 
I don't think about it so much because I feel like if you do your what you love in the best way and the level of you doing it, it's so good and everybody around you recognize it as a something you do in it, automatically you're getting the fame. It could mm. be in sports, it could be in media. So it's come with the success, I think, sometimes. You could be a famous doctor, you know. Is it something you seeked? You looked for? Not really, never. Mm. So you do what you love and it came with it. I rather to be loved rather than fame, than understand mm. and felt. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. You'd rather be loved, understood than being famous. Yeah. Mm. But it's so hard to, I'm happy actually we're doing this interview because it's so hard to, sometimes in music, you can express, but you can express fully. Mm. Like, because the, the rhythm, the, the lyrics, the, the, the beats, the limits for us, I mean, back in the day, not now anymore. <laughs> so mm. it's hard sometimes, but when you talk actually about it. This is important. Like yeah. I'm also getting to know you. It's the first time today we meet, so it's nice, you know? I think we, did, we should do a Tohi talk and I'm interviewing you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I get to know you more. <laughs> you would say, Hassan, you're an introvert or an extrovert? Both. Interesting. 50-50, <laughs> you think? Yeah, probably. Um, I'm a, I, I fall under the category of an ambivert. Ambivert is what you just said, mixed breed. Yeah. It's kind of like a balance. And there was, yin, everything is yin yang, you know. <laughs> but a lot of people, so if, you're, if you're like 70% extroverted, then you would call yourself an extrovert. If you're 70% introverted, you say, I'm an introverted person. Ambiverts are like people who would go to an event but don't want to stay too long. Mm -hmm. I'm very much that guy. I know I'm a lot of people like that I have too, a few yeah. friends, you know? It depends where you are, to be honest, and which events and who, who what's mm. the reason. And Because I normally put my circle super, super close for a few people only, like that mm. are, I call it my family, the friends that we choose as a family. <laughs> yes. So I'd rather to just spend the time with those people and the new energy that it brings something to my creations and my life and my peace. Mm. We have a, a cool question. It's called the cube test. Where is it? It needs, but you seem like a very creative person, so I'm gonna use it with you. Can I have the card? It's a very cool one. All right. This is just the explanation for me, to help me. Okay. So, I'll, but I need your imagination. You're a creative, so. All right. Cool? You with That's me? It. Yeah. Okay. Close your eyes. And uh, <laughs> I, I need your real full imagination. I want you, Hussein, to imagine a completely empty desert. Mm -hmm. Nothing in this desert. Nobody. No, not you. Nothing. It's just empty. And then suddenly an, a, a cube appears. You can see it? The cube? A cube, yes. Like cube? Yes. All right. How does the cube look like? It is icy and clear color for me. Okay. Trans and it's like kind of 3D with the depth, not just like from front angle. Yes. It's from up, like all the angles. Is it big or small? It is big actually, not too big, but big. Bigger than you? Yeah. Like a building or a house or a... Almost a... Kaaba in Mecca size. Okay, like a, <laughs> like a Kaaba size. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's you said it's white, icy. Is it transparent? Yeah. You can see inside. Icy. Okay. You can see inside. Yeah. Clear. Is it? Where is it? Is it on the sand? Inside the sand? Floating? On the sand. On it. Okay. And um, after the cube has said floating. That's such a Harry Potter. It is. Yeah. Image. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, after the cube. You see a ladder. Where is the ladder? On the left side. Is it uh, separate from the cube or on the cube? On the cube. On the cube. Is it new or old? It's middle. Used. Not too old, not too. Okay. And is it uh, tall or short? It's taller than. Taller than the cube. A little bit. Okay. Few steps. 
So it's uh, it has a lot of steps or a few hit steps. The, hit the spot right, just just above. Yeah. Okay. And after the ladder, you see a horse. Mm-hmm. Explain. What do you see? How is the horse? It's coming from far away, running okay. to me. Running to the cube. Yeah, and the place. Yes. I'm on top of the cube now. You're I'm not there. there in the picture. Only oh. cube, ladder, and a horse. So the horse is running fast towards the, the area. Tree. Okay. Yeah. And how does it look like? Yeah, looking brown, just running brown, through. Brown, black, strong. Uh, the, the horse, you mean, right? Yes. Um, it's a white horse, I guess. Mm-hmm. And with the long hair. Okay. So is it, does it stop or does it keep going around? No, just keep, it's just running to the, Towards coming it. to the cube. Yeah. Okay. After the horse, you see flowers. Mm-hmm. Where are the flowers? On top of the horse. Interesting. Many or little? Few. Few. White roses. Good health or wilting? Very good health. Fresh. Very good health. Okay. Fresh out the box. And the last thing, Hussein, that you see is a storm. You Where, don't see a storms. <laughs> Where is the storm? They didn't believe in us. God did. <laughs> Where is the storm in this image? I should see it. Yeah, a storm appeared. Where did it appear? Very far away. Very far. Is yeah. it coming towards like anything? We have time with my horse to go. Mm, interesting. Is yeah. it coming towards you or it's not? No, it's going to the right. Okay. <laughs> That's interesting. Yalla, open your eyes. <laughs> oh, wow. You ready? I nearly fell to see. I told you I'm jet lag, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this one, you're going to enjoy this. It was a very interesting, actually, one. Because I've done this many times. Yeah. So the cube test. This probably was close to your imagination. <laughs> I wish. The really? problem is the first time I did it, somebody already explained it. So it, I couldn't do it. Like they just explained, oh. they gave me the explanation first. It's like watching the ending oh, of yeah, a movie. And I'm can't. like, fuck, no. I can't do anything. Okay. So the Q personality test uh, comes from a research by a Japanese psychologists and it's called a cocology research, right? It has mm-hmm. many tests. So it works on your subconscious because mm-hmm. you don't know why I'm asking you these questions. So you're ask, answering naturally. So the cube is your sense of self mm-hmm. or your ego. If it's a big cube, which is quite big in your it's the Kaaba <laughs> level, you have a you you're bold, you're confident, and you're willing to be seen. You don't mind people seeing you and getting attention, mm-hmm. which is very artist. You're a rapper, <laughs> so. And then he said it's standing on the sand. So that that means it's stable. It you know what you, you want from life and you intend to get it, which mm-hmm. he said is this and then this. Yeah. <laughs> Logical and precise. Okay. Then you said it is uh, I'm patient. <laughs> um, you said it's uh, not so you can see inside. That means your inner world and your attitude are still being shaped. Mm-hmm. You're growing, you're evolving, you're learning. So then the ladder. The ladder is your family and friends. Okay. So if it's higher than the cube, which is for you a little. You value your friends and family very highly and you depend on them. Okay. Nice. And if it's many steps, like plus, you probably enjoy being the social butterfly. You like people liking you, your family, your uncles, your friends. And if it's plus 12, you have few friends, but you have a lot of acquaintances. So mm-hmm. you know a lot of people, but very few friends. Yeah, true. And if it's old, You've known your friends for a long time or you know each other well. If it's new, most of your friends are new or you don't know each other well. So you're in the middle, you said. Middle, exactly. Yeah. And then I he said... I need to find this Japanese guy. It's, it's, <laughs> it's cool, huh? true. My, te- my team were looking for him. We're yeah. trying to get in touch. He's wanted. <laughs> so interesting. Uh, and it's so accurate, Hussein. This, it is. this is it crazy. Is. It is. If it's touching the cube, which yours was, not completely dependent on family and friends, but you rely on them for support and guidance sometimes. It's probably emotional support. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's so you because you left your country mm-hmm. and you left your family even when they went to London. Yeah. You, you, you learn at a young age to be independent, but you yeah. always go and visit them. So you're... Yeah, balancing. Uh, 
interesting now. Yeah. The horse, ideal partner. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you said... Long hair. <laughs> I said... She said, white, <laughs> long hair. So you need to find somebody who's very white and has very, very, white. very long hair. <laughs> That's racist. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you like somebody white, it's up to you. Um, I didn't say very white. <laughs> no, but the, honestly, the color of the horse doesn't have an explanation. Yeah. It's just the beauty. If, it's, if somebody says it's a strong horse, then maybe they look for a strong person. If they say somebody, it was a graceful horse or like, you know, prancing. You know, it's, it just explains. It was a strong running. personality, I huh? think. Maybe, I think for you, it, you said it's white, it's running fast, and it's running towards the cube. And the closer to the cube signifies the closer the relationship you want with your ideal partner. It's mm. as if for you, a woman is coming towards yeah, your it life was, now. Yeah, it was a bit, not too far, but... Mm. <laughs> And uh, the not like the storm. <laughs> no. And I'll come to the storm. Oh, the flower. Flowers. So flowers are children. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, and I you want said, few for you sure. You said that you want a f- uh, f- f- few healthy ones. And you White said, rose, I said. <laughs> Vibrant blossoming garden reflects the health and prosperity of your children as well as your relationship with your children. So you like a healthy relationship with your kids or your nephew, etc. You know, to yeah. have a sweet relationship. The flower, I saw it, I think it was a little bit more. On, it was like 11, 12. Are you sure? I want to have a kid. No, <laughs> like, I, I, I asked about this. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily, and this is that's my... a football team, bro. <laughs> that's my interpretation. Yeah. I don't think it only signifies your biological kids, but you like children. Family, yeah. Are. So your nephew, I, I like, or, like, it helps. You like to be around them. And uh, the no, interesting if thing, one day, inshallah, if I want to have a family, I want like three kids, yeah. four kids, a few dogs and pets. And okay, so they're all your <laughs> busy, busy home, right? So um, the flowers could be a pets too. Maybe, no? Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. And you said something very interesting. You said the flowers are on the horse. So your future wife, she's the one who will bring you the children. <laughs> and of course, and take care of them. Yeah. <laughs> And the, the man, last part. The man is a pro- provider of emotionals and support and always the backbone for the family, you know. The last one is the storm, which is fear, stress, and anxiety. And if it is, in your case, vaguely in sight or on the horizon, you are at more peaceful inner place. However, the closer the storm, the closer the immediate threat. But yours was, and it didn't affect yeah. your elements. So the storm or the problems in your life today or the stresses or the challenges, alhamdulillah, they're not affecting uh, Hussein or a girlfriend if she's coming or not, or if she's in your life or not, or your kids or your family and friends because it's yeah. the ladder. So it's there. You can see that sometimes maybe there's some yeah, yeah, yeah. normal life stresses, but it's not it's affecting. It's very interesting. Cool. I wish you didn't know the answers. I know, answers. man. This one I missed. I find a similar but different strategy and ask you later. <laughs> <laughs> um, what does love mean to you? Love. Now or yesterday? <laughs> what changed? Oh, I changed a lot about love for sure. Because mm. every relationship you have, you learn about your mistakes, about their mistakes. And you're totally going to be changed. Some people you lose, some people they lose you. So. With all of that balance, mm. I think you learn a lot. And if, I, if you ask me today, love is respect, loyalty, honesty, help to grow for each other and understand each other and make peace for each other and make motivations. And accept each other with any mistakes you have, you know? Mm. Whoever you are, as Anas, and whoever I am as Hussein, but they called me Tohi. <laughs> uh, just accept that and I haven't found that person yet because sometimes when some stage you feel like, oh, she's the one. Mm. And in the time, I'm not saying they're bad or you're bad. Mm. It's proof like some people, they just come to your life to level you up and teach you some stuff. and go and you teach them some stuff and change their life in a good way hopefully <laughs> normally you're trying to and that's it mm. but your final destination only god wrote that already like i believe on that you're gonna 
find your person. Mm -hmm. But till that, like, listen, like what we have as a self respect and self love or for our work, for our uh, passion, for our uh, dreams. So we need somebody to come to fit this puzzle and next to us and make this empire bigger, basically, that we have in our brain. Mm. So that's, that's how I've seen it. What about you? I want to ask this question from you as well. What is love to me? Yeah. It's, it's an interest. I think I've had the uh, pleasure of listening to so many definitions of love because of the show also. Yeah. Um, I don't think, you know, Hussein, I don't think there is honestly one fixed definition of love. And I think that's why so many movies do well and so many books do well and so many songs do well. Because yeah. it's this it's this mysterious thing, love. Yeah. But some of the things that I connected with mm -hmm. is that love is a mix of respect, trust, and good chemistry. And when I say chemistry, I'm not only talking about physical chemistry, I'm talking about physical, Energy, mental, sure. emotional, spiritual. Yeah, yeah. You know, even sometimes when you meet a girl and you have the same taste in music, it's chemistry. You have yeah. the same taste for sense of humor. You can be silly, but she laughs. It's chemistry. Yeah. So I think you need this. You can't have love if you don't respect the person. It's, it's happiness and respect and yeah. honesty. To be and honest. I, love, I loved your words. The words you used, I connect to. Safety is important. Yeah. Accepting somebody with their flaws. You yeah, say, you know everybody what? Everybody has mistakes. Like, and we are not perfect. There is no Mr. Perfect. There is no Miss Perfect in Fun. the world. You're not looking for that. It's nowhere. Yeah. And you know, one of the... Even Leili and Majnun, they, they're saying that they were, they were like two lovers, like... <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jura yeah. and Romeo. <laughs> they, they, he was crazy because you know, he was doing crazy things because nobody's perfect. And, and love, love, love is the... nice to be not perfect. Correct. Yeah. And it's not logical. Like I noticed that love doesn't work with logic so much. Like it doesn't, you can't explain it. You like you crazy shit. Let's say Hussein meet, to, yeah. met um, 13 special women in his life. From mm -hmm. his 17 till today, okay? Let's say 13. Special, I'm not talking about any girl. I and like number some, seven. <laughs> huh? I said I like number seven. Okay, let's say this, <laughs> seven. And let's say w one of them is not even the most beautiful one. Mm -hmm. And not the most funny one. And not the most charismatic one. But you love her. And you don't even fucking know. You're like, why? Like, why this one? You don't understand. So there's no logic. Even your friends are like, bro, like, that's not usually your type. And you're like, I don't know. It's something. It's something. It's something about her. Yeah. So you I can't really explain it. It's always, when you say that, it reminds me that that movie Avatar, when you go, they were connecting with the tail, you remember? Yeah. So A new one is coming out. Sometimes you, your chakras, your energy, your life. Something. It's and something. it's where you are in your life. Yeah. You know? Uh, I think timing is also important. And one thing that I love about love is that I think love can be very selfless, like mothers. You know, yeah. when mothers love us. Unconditional love, yeah. Uh, the unconditional, I think all human beings love conditionally. I think the least conditional. Not the mother love, though. I think the least one is mother. Yeah. I think mothers. Only, Underrated. <laughs> only ex, ex, I do think mothers want some conditions, which is respect and appreciation. Because True. you know she can be she can love you, but if you're a piece of shit, Especially and you're rude, moms. <laughs> yeah. After after a year of you being rude or not responding to your mother, she will stop talking to you probably, or after two years. Probably, or yeah. But they're so beautiful that even if you ignore the mother for five years and then you call her one time, she probably forget everything. True. So it is the least conditional one, in my opinion. Yeah. But same. if you love somebody selflessly, the more you are selfless and not selfish, I think the more you love them. True. I agree. You know? It's not about you. Like I call you and I'm like, Hussein, um, I'm in LA and I, I know we haven't talked in six months, but man, I'm, I'm in a bad situation mm -hmm. and uh, I need you to come pick me up. And maybe you're tired and you had a whole day in the studio and you're like, what, why is this guy calling me? But if you have love for me, you're like, yeah, fuck yourself, Hussein. You know what? It's your boy. I'm tired. I don't feel like it, but he's my boy. So that's love. For me, definitely. Yeah. Even though you're tired, even though you have, you're busy, I send you Uber and bring you home. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. But, but you know bro, what I mean. Just say, stay there. You're gonna see somebody <laughs> pick you up. <laughs> a black cat, like. 
Um, <laughs> there is a rumor on the research that you're married in secret. Who? You. Me? Yeah. But even the research said, we're not sure if this is real or not. It's a rumor. No, I had, I had a serious relationship. It was towards to getting married, but I haven't married or hadn't had that experience yet. Hmm. So, and the funny thing is you said I haven't... I mean, I would say it out loud if I'm married. That's a beautiful thing. But some people, you know, they do it in secret. So I asked. Some people, they're keeping it for privacy. I'm, I'm that, that type of person. Nobody ever sees who are dating and... I was always keeping my family, parents, you know, like everything's no, no picture out because I just want to have my, you know, peace and protected privacy because mm. you shouldn't just, you know, like it's, it's my music brand and the way I, I want to think and I want to create my music mm. doesn't need to people see like my private lifestyle so much. Mm. Maybe I'm now like that. Maybe in future I change my mind. Mm. Um, and maybe I didn't find the right one. Well, according to, show, according to this, uh, yeah, she's, she's running towards you. Yeah, so Still. you have to wait. <laughs> when I don't know, can you, you call, you call, call me. Japanese guy? <laughs> call, me. <laughs> call me when I she. Need to, when I need see to one on one therapy session with him. <laughs> um, what is your biggest weakness in life? My kindness. Hmm. Why do you say that? <laughs> they take it for weakness, but I know it's kindness. Do you think it is a weakness or it's an, a special thing to have? I think it's a special. That's why I keep having it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah, but they're taking it for weakness sometimes. You know what I think? If, so, if you meet somebody that takes advantage of your kindness, they should be out of your life. If you, take some, yeah. if you bring somebody who loves your kindness or appreciates it, and you're like, they're like, man, most people are but not nice and you're nice. That's the kind of people. Again, who's, who's that person to you? When you have like with the person like relationship for 15 years or 20 years and it's becoming part of your family already. And in certain of their timing in their life with their, with their own problems, sometimes maybe people, they are in a bad situation and they're not treat you the way you want to. Mm. So you can't just throw them and out of your circle because of that mistake. So sometimes I'm trying to rebuild and mm. try to fix things before I put them out of my life. Yeah, fair. And that's, that's the time it hurts and happy if it's mm. resultable, if it's the word. <laughs> <laughs> you mean if it brings a good result? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Sometimes I make it up words. That's fine. Yeah. You're an artist, you can. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who can um, say what? <laughs> what does Iran mean to you? You know, imagine like, I don't know how many countries we have, but imagine each person is representing the countries and humanity as a unit world. So I feel like you always have something with the place you we were born and the nationality you have. So it's kind of your everything, like your reason, you're doing it. You all try to doing it to not convince your girlfriend or your <laughs> mom to, oh, you're the best singer. You're trying to do it for your culture, for your people, for Iran, for my country, for you, you for your country. Or I see all the, all the like true artists, they're doing it for, for their city, for their people, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think it's everything. Mm -hmm. One of the everythings, I have a few everythings too. <laughs> yeah, it's family, it's, it's the place you were born, it's your purpose, and I think it's one of the most important things for me. Nice. Um, what is, um, Hassan, what's your best moment in your life so far? To be conscious and in peace and be able to do what is in my vision. Is there a certain 
thing that happened in your life or a certain moment that is the most, one of your happiest moments in your life so far? Mm. Depends on, you mean the work world or family anything, world? Anything that now just came to your mind that you, your heart is full when you remember it. Family wise, I have nephew and I feel to be blessed to be uncle. Mm. That's my family side. And the second nephew is coming too, <laughs> very soon. Uh, Work-wise, yeah, that Balatar songs with uh, Sheb Khaled was finally the vision. I was dream, like thinking to do it in the right way as, as the music video, as the music goes and the story behind it and the combination of young generation and older generation mm. with the international love and that's music. So mm. that's my happiest moment I made that project. And what is the yeah. hardest moment in your life so far? Hardest? Yeah. Hardest when I'm in tour, for sure. For is there one, like one incident, one accident, one heartbreak, one oh. pain, painful one? I mean, we all had a heartbreak, I think. I had it as well, but... No, I, I don't mean it has to be heartbreak. If, if the hardest, If yeah. Hussein thinks this was one very tough moment in my life, what is that? The tough moment was the news from my country, to be honest. Because it's like, you know, sometimes you have everything. It's just in your heart. You're not happy because, you know, so many like people suffer. And so that's, that was my hardest moment. For sure. And um, hardest decision you made? To move my country, to move out. Mm. You're young, no? 16, 17. Yeah, very young. Yeah. And it's not so like you... I go back for 20 years now. Wow. Almost 17 years. Really? Yeah. So hopefully one day. Because we were like that 40 years ago. Mm. Four, 44 years ago. Yes. So yeah, temporary. Um, what's your father's name? Dawood. Dawood. Yeah. If you had to summarize uh, Dawood. English people say David, right? <laughs> so Dawood, if you had to summarize him for me in one word, what word would you choose? The humanity, to be honest, because he's such a calm person and mm. I learned so much about to be a good person from him mm. because he's one of the type of that anytime you call, he's give you some advice. You know, he's not asking random daily question. What did you do this with that? Like, he's just giving you some mm. life tips. Nice. And your mother's name? Do I need to say that? <laughs> Can you? I'd rather to keep the family's name. Okay, we call her in Arabic. What we do is we call her Um, like mother of. So I will call, we call her, her Maman. Um, um Hassan. Yeah, Um Hussein. Yeah. Um Hussein means the mother or, of Hassan. Or we call it Maman. Maman. Maman is your what you say Maman. to your mom. I tell her. Maman. Okay, so for me, I would say Um Hussein. Yeah. In one word. The reason I'm not saying the names because they go in Iran and London and you yes, know. that's fine. For the safety. <laughs> so, Um Hussein in one word. Definitely a true angel. Angel. Yeah. Why? Because she almost like, not almost, she's like created who I am as a personality and the, the hunger she's also having her mindset mm. and she done a lot for us and nothing for herself so true hero for sure mm. and your sister we don't need her name your sister and yeah my sister also another in one word smaller angel <laughs> <laughs> she's lovely yeah. too yeah she's amazing she's like my best friend are we talking a lot and yeah, I'm having a blessed family too. I'm, I'm sure like they care about me and 
I'm blessed to having them as mm. angels and hero too. I mean, mm. I was always living alone though, like, but in your heart, man, you know, you have somebody have your back forever it's and fun. you can talk and, mm. you know, and that's in your blood as well. Mm. From different bonds happening between parents and family. When, when was the last time Hussein cried? Before I come to this interview, because I haven't asleep. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Probably a few days ago. Why? Do we need to know why? If you don't mind. Sometimes it's just you full of mix of things, mm. you know. It's just like you feel you need to cry. And you have some sad news and you have some stress and problems and everything. So sometimes we laugh, sometimes we cry. At least you know now. <laughs> yes. And did it, does it make you feel better Shout after? Out to <laughs> what? Sorry. Did, does it make you feel better after? Of course. Mm. Of course. I think it's the soul treatment. Sometimes when you're heavy, you just yes. cry and you feel empty. Tohi. <laughs> Tohi. <laughs> If you not cry, you never be toy. That's so true. It's like you need. But the thing is, my song is more energetic, so everybody think like I'm I'm the happiest, craziest playboy. Yeah, what's up, bro? Like it's totally calm and chill, and hmm. I think I'm emotional as well. You look like a very sensitive person, and I mean it in a good way. Yeah, I think a good artist feels things and tastes things, and they live life, and that's yeah. why it's risky because you can be so happy. And when you have, have bad news, it can really hit you hard, you know? But as long as you can manage good and bad, I said, like, yeah. you have to keep it always up and going and happy, you know? Mm. But even though you're sad, like, you should keep it happy because that's the only way you can feel better. Mm. It's the maybe thing you said, you know? Ah. You shouldn't be happy, you shouldn't be sad. Just live in your life mm. and take everything as a process. Take, love the journey, don't love the goal, you know? The journey is what makes it special. I agree, If man. they give you the treasure, like right now, that whatever you want, that's not the point of it, you know? So, um, a hypothetical question. Mm -hmm. If I can, if we take uh, Hussein's heart mm -hmm. and we place it in front of you, what would your heart tell Hussein? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of the mask, remember? Yes. <laughs> ah, you saw that movie, huh? Of Man, course. like this generation yeah, doesn't know that movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're, you're young, much younger than me. How I'm 33. 33, yeah. So we have Where eight, are you? eight years. You're 41. 41, nice. Mm. So yeah. If, and okay, let's take a serious moment. If really, really, with all the things that you went through, good, bad, hurt, happiness, working hard on your craft, becoming an artist, meeting people, lovely nephew, yeah. tell another one. Uh, so if that's all your heart, everything you've gone through, and we really keep it in front of you and you can imagine that, what is your heart telling you? What would it tell you at this stage in your life? He's saying, keep protecting me. Don't let me break again. Just mm. keep going and choose wisely and make sure, try to not let bad energy come inside me. Hmm. This is a hard saying. <laughs> and you said break again. What broke it the first time? Oh, he catched it. <laughs> <laughs> you had a heartbreak as well. Everybody I'm has. 41. Of course, yeah. you have a few probably. <laughs> <laughs> How many? To pieces now? <laughs> no, alhamdulillah. No, still good. No. Still, you know, this every part of your body, you can rehale. So hard yeah. to spawn up them. It's just How bad was yours? Hail, hail. Uh, if I'm be honest, is it still fresh? Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. How fresh? A month? A few months. Okay. So I'm dealing good, no? I hope so. <laughs> you I'm are, asking him <laughs> you only know yeah but I also think you know um, it's okay to be sad 
Yeah, like it's not about being sad on losing someone. When you're happy with your own self alone and you know your worth and value and what you bring to the table or be the table, mm. <laughs> you know, you always have that confidence and love and uh, light in the darkness for yourself to not lose it, you know, mm. totally. But it's just more the feelings and when you I think dream some future life and it's not going the way you want it. Mm. It's just that hurts more, I think. Yes, it's our attachment to what we imagine the future to Probably, be. Probably, yeah. But the more we disconnect from that, the more we're present. True. You know? Um, and life is funny, man. Like you can have the perfect partner. Mm-hmm. And who would have the image that you have, but then they get in a car accident and they go, they're gone. So it's not even somebody breaking up with somebody. It's just life. It's maybe. It's Everything crazy. Is, it's maybe. So uh, for me, it doesn't matter if somebody um, you can have a future with or not. You can't control that. Yeah. All you can is enjoy that they're here today. The tomorrow yeah. they're again here. Oh, alhamdulillah. After if tomorrow, not, my family is still here. Alhamdulillah. Every day. Because every day is a gift. So I, I don't bother thinking what will happen in one year. I try not to. So true. You know, but our movies and our books and our conversations make us imagine, oh, I'll have kids with this person. I will reach this title. I'll make this hit song. You have no control. Even sometimes I think in your life, you make a song, and you're like, oh, it's a shitty song. And then everybody loves it. You're like, oh, really? Like, you didn't expect it? Happens. it? Yeah, didn't expect it. My first it. viral song was like that. <laughs> you see? So oh, yeah. you have, we have to learn to be present. It's not easy. But yeah, because sometimes you pissed off what happened and what not happened, mm. but everything is planned for you. And you know it maybe a few years later. Your heartbreak it's, is a maybe. No, my heartbreak mm. was, I think I'm healed from it already because mm. if we meant to be for each other, anyone like is coming to your life or not, Mm. It was it was the temporary person that comes to your life and adds something to your life or teach you some lessons and mm. reshape you and go, you know. If you come back again, God's plan, nothing changed for me, you know. The, the thing is you need to go straight the way you want to go and your partner or emotional relationship or family problems or friends problems or financial situation or nothing need to stop you from this world so they're all trying to st- stop you anyway mm. all of them good or bad they're trying to stop you to keep going yes mm. how would you summarize tohi in one word empty mm. and hussein in one word Fool. Fool? <laughs> yeah. Why? Because he's trying to gain more experience. Ah, full. Full. Okay. Full and empty, so it's yin yang again. There you are. <laughs> so you feel full as a. I human? feel full of experience by this age. Obviously, by every year you gain more. Mm. But yeah, I feel. I know a lot. Nice. You need man. to talk more about life. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> Less. I appreciate it. It was a pleasure. Pleasure to yeah. talk to you. I enjoyed it. It's, for me, it's also so interesting because you come to me and I have no background of you. Yeah. So it's like I need to be neutral, like Tohi. Exactly. You know, I need to completely come to you with zero and then I will have my own judgment of you after, you know? Yeah. No, and it was I, enjoyable I enjoyed the combo. Enjoy. It was so nice. Yeah. I'm happy, man. Thanks for the time, bro. Thank you, man. Bless. Uh, tell me about those. Oh, yeah. These ones. This is... So first, why the ring dust? Dust. It's dust of gods. Dust of gods. Okay. Yeah. So this is a brand. Uh, it's for my friend. He's always providing everything I wear on the stage. And okay. Nice. Yeah. I was actually in New York Fashion Week for their brands as well. So okay. many football players, Neymar, and so many people working for them. Cool. So, yeah. So this is Khodaya Mercy. Khoda means God. God mercy, thank God. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. And it's one of my songs, Khodai Mercy, my favorite okay. song that I made. And this side is Tohi. Tohi. That's very nice. Yeah. Thank okay. You. Rose? 
Rose is just my favorite flower. Which color? White. And is I had that? a song name called Gold, which is means flower in okay. Persian. White, white flower. Yes. White rose. This is the third eye, yes. earth on it. And this is the, in the song now. You said also. Eye right? on you, yeah. There you are. This is my first tattoo. I, everything I did from last year, to be honest, only this time for now, okay. <laughs> uh, is a microphone, it's my sword, ah, my weapon, yes. and my wing to fly. Okay. This is love. L O V E. Nice. And Tohi. That's actually in, nicely written, huh? Yeah, and it's Tohi in, in the Persian or Arabic language if you can read Tohi. Ta ah, sah, sah, sah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And it's the guy with two books or a uh, food. Ah, <laughs> oh, the hand. <laughs> yeah. There you are. Okay. <laughs> so this is Magic. It's okay. one of my new songs. It's not out yet. And then I saw this one. Triple uh, Seven? Yes. So it's the jackpot and angel numbers. And uh, I used to have a group called Zero Two One. Okay. It's Zero Two One. Okay, nice. Yes. So when you want to call Tehran, mm. the area code is Zero Two One. Okay. So you need to call Zero Two One first for yeah. the capital of Iran and then call that number. Nice. So we, we made that group, I mean, with our friends, a few, few other friends, they, they created and I created so this cool. hand logo, Zero Two One. This is a superstar, we had the album. And the eagle? Eagle, I did it a few days ago. It's fresh, yeah. Super fresh. And what does that circle mean? Eagle, oh, that, that's the same here, the logo. Do you yeah. remember I told you Toy yeah, in the Math? Ah, oh, Chi, okay, got yeah, it. So got Toy it. in Math is that the logo. Okay, nice. And Eagle is normally alone. Sah. Not single for life, though, but <laughs> <laughs> normally alone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. So I like the character of it. Cool, I that's love it. that everybody, yeah. everyone has a meaning. Oh, I have this one as well. What's that? The compass? It's just the sun, I have the, and the, yeah. Uh, direction? Yeah, direction.